we're going to compute the difference quotient and simplify. Our x value is 1. Our function is x squared. Now your homework function is probably a little more complicated. This one's a bit more easy. Uh, the first thing we need to do is write down the difference quotient. Now this should be on your note page um, or you should have uh, begin to memorize this. I'm going to scroll up to where it is from the lecture. So here's our difference quotient. fx plus h minus f of x over h. Now our x value is a 1. Uh, f of x is here. Sometimes the most tricky part is this uh, f of x plus h. So our x value again is a 1. So we have f of 1 plus h. And in here, uh, so we're, our f function takes the input and squares it. Now sometimes it's good to write f of a box. So this will be box squared. Um, if it's a bit more complicated, maybe it was like three times a box squared. And mine's just take the input and square it. So I have the input is 1 plus h. Now I'm just going to think about putting the 1 plus h inside that box and then squaring it. So if I just write it as 1 plus h in the box squared, that's a silly way to write it in math. The way we do write it in math is we use parentheses like that. So that's 1 plus h squared. I can plug this in here for fx plus h, but we are going to need to FOIL this out. So remember, multiply first. Um, inside, outside is h plus h, so that's two h's uh, plus h squared. All right, that goes in f of x plus h right there. And minus, now minus f of x, that's just x squared. You don't need parentheses there for this problem, but if f of x was more complicated, I may have needed to group it with parentheses. And all of this is divided by h. All right, so we have the difference quotient we've plugged in. And, uh-oh, what did I do wrong? Ah, x is supposed to be 1, so this should be f of 1. Maybe I should have written that down f of 1 is 1 squared, which is 1. So that should just be 1 right there. All right, this is the difference quotient, but I have not simplified it yet. So whenever you're doing a difference quotient problem, you do need to simplify it. And the you, you know it's simplified when you've canceled this h in the denominator. So think about this h is really the one you need to get rid of. And we're going to uh, see if we can get rid of it. Now I do have a 1 minus a 1, so those 1's cancel. 2h plus h squared, if I could write, 2h plus h squared divided by h. All right, if you're really good at algebra, you can cancel right now, but it's a bit dangerous unless you really know what you're doing. So what I'm going to do instead of canceling is I'm going to factor, there's an h, in both terms on the top. So I'm going to factor out that h. h uh, factored out. So now I have 2 plus this h squared. When I factor out an h, I'm left with an h divided by h. You can always check your factoring by distributing. Make sure you get what you started with. Now I'm multiplying by h here and dividing by h. So now this multiply by h cancels the divide by h and I'm left with 2 plus h. So now my difference quotient is uh, simplified. So I have computed the difference quotient and simplified it. So this would be my answer if I was plugging in. If I was computing the instantaneous rate of change here, you will very soon, and on a few of these problems you're going to uh, think about what happens when h gets very small. So if h gets very small, 2 plus a very small number gets close to 2. This is close to 2.
We'll get quite a bit more precise very soon and we'll take a limit when h goes to zero. Uh, but for now, uh, this is uh, our answer to the difference quotient simplified. Anytime you have a square, you're going to, in, in a difference quotient with a function that's a uh, quadratic, a degree two polynomial, you're going to end up foil, plugging in and foiling and then canceling something in the numerator and then factoring out your h and canceling the denominator. So these steps are going to be in common to any difference quotient question you get with a degree two or a quadratic polynomial.